How can you ensure the parents at these schools that they will be listened to as they give their public comment? Uh, they, they will be listened to. Those comments are incredibly important to the board. Now, surprise is the main reaction today after hearing the names of Salt Lake City schools that could be closed. Some people living within the district were stunned to see that some of the names of those schools on a list. Paul Nelson is joining us live now. And Paul, what did the district, when they're looking for when to consider which schools should shutter, what are they saying? Well, district officials tell us that this process, and we are early in this study process right now, it won't be just about, say, enrollment numbers and other data. They'll look at things like green space and the connection that the school has with the community. But meanwhile, the people that we spoke with said they had no idea that the school that they either live near or use was up for possible consideration. If you talk to people living near Emerson Elementary School in Salt Lake City, they'd tell you there doesn't appear to be any shortage of students going there. Jordan Wright lives just across the street. I assumed that there was a large student body, and it's surprising to hear that it's on the list of schools that are going to be looked at. Plus, it has a magnet program, a dual immersion language program, and it serves as a special needs hub. My uh, girlfriend teaches kids with special needs here, so... That would also be unfortunate. On the west side of the district, Sharon Williams has a child enrolled in the summer program at Newman Elementary. She was surprised to hear it's up for possible closure. Yeah, I thought there were a lot of kids over here um, that would be going to this school, and it's a lovely facility. Three schools are up for possible study on the city's west side, namely Newman, Jackson, and Riley. Emerson, Wasatch, Hawthorne, and Benyon are up for consideration on the east side. District spokesperson Yandari Chatwin says if a school that houses a special program is closed, that service will still be available. Those are district programs, so in the event that one of those schools were to close, the district would place that program at a different school. Plus, she says contrary to public belief, the cabinet started looking at this data last year, and a recent legislative audit did not force them to start the process. Why did it take so long for the district to finally kind of get this process going? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, a lot of things, and I, I'll just be forthcoming and say that a lot of this predates me, but we've had a pandemic in the last few years, um, some change in leadership here in the district, but right now this board is ready to make those tough calls. Next up for the board, they have to decide which school that they want to consider studying in August. Public comment is expected to begin September, and they could make their final decision in either December or January. Reporting live, Paul Nelson, KUTV 2 News.